All right, Joe, welcome everybody and welcome Joe to our discussion entitled Truth Taco, I'm sorry, Truth Tools and Tacos. I had to throw tacos in there, Joe, because otherwise nobody really cares about the truth or tools. <laughs> That's exactly right. Everybody wants to know about the tacos, but we are excited to be with you all tonight. Um, Joe and I met a few years ago. We both were working at the same space, Strong Shop Fitness in Nicholasville, Kentucky. And uh, the more we got to know about each other, the more we realized we have a couple important things in common. We both have a lifelong commitment, Joe, to our personal fitness and wellness. I know you and your wife both played sports in college and you, you guys both are committed to staying healthy and exercising and stuff, and I love that. Same for me. But the other thing we have in common is that we have a professional commitment to telling the truth about health and exercise. And I think that's such a rare commodity these days. Don't you agree? Yeah, and thanks for doing this, Laura. This is gonna be fun. I know we're gonna try to pack a lot in in a few minutes here, but uh, yes. The interesting thing about the truth that, that I find is people do appreciate that. They find it refreshing. But one of the things that I have learned I need to help people do is tell themselves the truth because we tend to lie to ourselves. And a friend of mine said this, he said, behind every self-destructive thing we do is a lie we believe. So if we can stop believing lies, it's easier for us to, to win in this health and weight loss battle. So true. Absolutely. And, and so what is the truth about weight loss? I wrote down three things when thinking about that. One was that um, when we find ourselves, right, we wake up and we, we realize I can't wear those clothes I want to wear. A lot of people say that's what hit me. You know, I couldn't wear my clothes. We realize I should do something. Yeah. Okay. That would be the first thing. I should do something. This isn't something that I should just tolerate. And number two is I can do something, right? You're capable of doing what you need to do. It's important to know. And then uh, the last one, and, and the reason a lot of people don't end up getting it done is because it does require a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are looking for the plan that doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so they keep looking and looking and looking rather than realizing this is going to take some effort and some trade-offs. So those three, I should do it, I can do it, and it will require some work. I love that. And I love that you're honest about that. There is a truth to, to getting a big reward, like, like sustainable weight loss and better health. There is a little bit of um, effort and responsibility. <laughs> and there is. Like, a little We'd bit love it to not be the case. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But what a reward it is. Right. I love that. Oh, yeah. And so I, I feel like a lot of programs omit that. And that's so, that's an obvious thing that I think we need to include and be real very real with when we are supporting our clients and, and really telling the truth about what's going to be expected of well, them to get those results. Yeah. And what you just said, Laura, the reward, that's another lie is we, we tend to tell ourselves it's not going to be worth it rather than the truth and that this will be worth it. How many people do you know that have gotten healthier, they've lost weight and they look back and wish they could go back and eat that dessert that they skipped, right? And then, and they're lighter, their doctor's visit was great. They're off their meds. They love what they get to go by. They're excited about the cruise, but we, we lie to ourselves. You know, this meal, this dessert's worth it. Instead of looking at, no, it's going to be worth it to do the work. Yeah. It's, it's not excruciating. It's just going to require you to, you better be thinking about that reward or you're not going to be willing to do it. Exactly. And I think it's so interesting that we, we are able to look at other things in that way, like saving money or taking care of our vehicle or our home. Um, but when it comes to our yeah. own personal health, it's like, no, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, it is worth it. And you're not going to regret it. So, right. so what, what is the truth that people really need to be honest with themselves about? when they're, uh, you know, when they're, when they're making these big changes, what is, what, is there something else that you feel that you see over and over again, that people are just really still not telling the truth about when it comes to their own self-talk? Yeah, it's, it, it, this overlaps a little bit with the last question. I went out to eat with some friends, my wife and I, and another couple tonight, it's all good. Mm -hmm. And um, I got the salmon and the asparagus, of course, and quinoa. My goodness, can you get any healthier than that? <laughs> 
and then so the, the other couple they got some kind of good pizza and my wife got some great salad and then they got it was his birthday our buddy that was there and they brought out popcorn with chocolate drizzle and then they got this half cooked chocolate chip cookie with this stuff all over the top of it and ice cream and it was and we all shared it right nobody at the table would be in a in an overweight category more than a, a smidgen if at all right we all had dessert i know somebody at the table had one beer yeah and i know that um that dessert was kind of eaten but the interesting thing was at the end of the meal and that everybody was talking about this dessert thing i don't know how to describe it the ice cream the cookie thing and hot and in a little Hello. pan a little you know those cast iron pans and if anybody had covid we all got covid now after that meal because we're all just eating out of that but we left a little bit in there and i told him i said you guys there's a reason nobody at this table weighs 300 pounds this dessert is amazing yet every one of us is going to leave a bite in there it's yep. a it's a mindset that says something is important here doesn't mean we can't have this i love it but we are we are getting an idea you know there's a limit there is a limit that makes sense for me it's fine for me to have things but if I don't have appropriate limits, I'm not going to be happy. Mm -hmm. I love that. Well, and it's like the saying, the rich get richer or the rich stay rich. The thin stay thin because of mindsets like yeah. that. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Joe, there's yeah. so many different products and tools and gimmicks out there right now for weight loss. It's a huge industry. It's a multi-billion dollar a year industry. How does somebody go about selecting the right tool or the right program for them? You know, I think it's important that we realize um, what, what a lot of us don't want to realize how important this is because we're all like, well, I'm a little bit overweight. What's the big deal, right? So because we don't see it as a big deal, we don't ask for help. Mm -hmm. We'll try little things that we see here and there, but we don't make this investment says, I need help. Kind of like if you knew you were sick and you go to the doctor for a diagnosis, tell me what's wrong with me and tell me what you think I need to do. Yes. We'll do that for illnesses. We know we don't know what's wrong. Yes. And so I try to get people to think, you know, so 10 pounds overweight, 20 pounds overweight. When is it important? Okay. If 10 pounds doesn't matter, why will 20? Mm -hmm. Why will 30? When is it a big deal? Because if you were underweight, how long would how long does it take for you to be concerned about somebody that's underweight? They're supposed to weigh 150 and they weigh 90. Right. We get pretty worried about that pretty quick, don't we? Right. Exactly. But we flip it around and you're 30 or 40 pounds overweight. That's that's we're encouraged to do that. Yeah. Eat. It's the norm. Mm -hmm. It's the norm. So I, I, I'm like, you're not going to want, I know we're going to talk about tools and I'm getting ahead of myself, but yeah. you're not that interested in a shovel until you realize that's going to be the only way you're going to escape. Or you realize there's gold in my yard and the only way I'm going to get to it is with a shovel. So we look for tools. Nobody cares about a tool until they realize they're sick or there's a problem or that I need help. Then they're like, give me a tool, give me a tool. But we offer these nice little tools to, to right. people that don't care. Right. It's not going to do any good until we care. So we care. part of part of what I try to help people do is, is be honest about the seriousness of it or quit acting like you care. And I know it sounds blunt and harsh, but you, if you're 20 pounds overweight and it really doesn't bother you, then you might not want to do anything about it because it's not going to be easy enough Right. with your current concern it's going to require more than your current concern is going to be willing to give it until right. our current situation strikes us as severe. Mm -hmm. The solution will seem extreme. I love that. That's so true. Until we are un so uncomfortable in our current position that we're willing yeah. to get really uncomfortable to change it. Nothing's going to change. I love that. So tools are nice and they're necessary. They're, they're wonderful and they're critical, but until you have a need for it, you're just going to sit that shovel in the corner of your garage and, and leave it there. Yeah, exactly. And, and then once we do make that decision, Joe, once we are really ready to dig in and use the tools, how do you how do you pick? How do you know? Am I supposed to do, you know, this program or do that brand of exercise or eat this magic food? How do we how do we pick the right approach and, and get rid of Great. All the bells and whistles? Great question. Um, 
so to me, a tool is simply to make it easier, not to make it possible. You make it possible when you decide I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm going to have to do some work and I'm willing to, well, you're going to get it done. Now, hey, let's find the easiest way possible. That's when tools are fun. Hey, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this supplement. I'm going to try this new exercise. I'm going to walk. I'm going to buy these new shoes, you know, whatever. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go do this, whatever it is. Now those are appreciated and they can help fine tune it. Yeah. But what people tend to do is they major on the minors. They major on a tool and they're like, if I just do the right exercise, this will fix me. No, it won't. If I just find the right food combination, no. If I just learn my micros, macros, no. Yes. Those are tools. They're not your answer. So I'm all about tools. I love them. Once somebody's all in, I met with a guy recently and it might be an example. He said, Joe, I'm embarrassed it took me this long to meet with you. He said, it took a visit from a doctor, a bad report. He said, I'm ready. I've been treating my body like an amusement park. Mm -hmm. He said, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Right. So he's ready for any tool and he'll use it and it'll help him. But that mindset really helps a lot. If you can get to that place. I love that. So put aside all the flashy, you know, gimmicky stuff and really get down to the reality of what needs to be done. Yes. And, and I love tools, right? So one tool, and I, again, I, I found myself in the head. Um, where do tacos fit in? I, we're going to talk about that too. Aren't we? But um, <laughs> when, Can I read the next question? Of course, please. You, you said, when we get off track or need a reboot, what is one tool everyone should pull out of the kickstart to kickstart the process again? So there is, I do have a favorite tool, but again, doesn't do any good if you're not in, right? Okay, yeah, <laughs> like, right. Matter of fact, people will do it for a few days, like a diet, yeah. right? They're using a diet as a tool. It's like, that's not going to do you any good. But my favorite one, once you're in and you say, tell me what to do, yeah. give me something, a big bang for my buck, would be don't eat anything after 7.30 at night. Mm -hmm. Why? And, and for some people that are close to where they want to be, that's all they're going to need to do. Yeah. They won't need to buy anything. They won't need to join anything. They won't need to do anything different. If they do that, they'll find, wow, that, that took care of it for me. It's just a new standard that they have for themselves because so many people that the only reason, because they come to me and say, Joe, what else do I need to do? You know, I've done everything I can. I'm still 15 pounds overweight. And, and we talk and I'm like, well, and they eat great. They eat healthy, but then it, we get around to it and they do have something later at night while they're watching TV. Yeah. And when we add up the calories that that's adding to their day, we find, oh, that's 20 pounds worth of calories. Mm. If all we did was eliminate that, you're going to eventually, eventually settle at 20 pounds less than you are. But who wants to do that? That's fun. Exactly. Uh, well, it, yeah, it, but it's, it's very doable. We'll probably say all the time. Yeah, but, but what else? But well, that's cool. But what else can like, no, I'm telling yeah. you, this is what, what give me something. Give me something where I don't have to give up what something I'm eating. Exactly. What they well, want. I hear this all the time, too. But I'm only having a little bit. It's only a little bit of this or that after 730. Well, if you have to describe your food as just a little bit, it's probably, yeah. you probably shouldn't be eating it at all. <laughs> yeah. And I'm fine. An and, and I'm all about you got another solution you like better. Go ahead and do it. Right. But you're going to have to do something. And and we have this tendency to want it to work out without having to sacrifice anything. Yeah, yeah. And that's where we're going to have to be real and and realize the sacrifice is worth it. It's so worth it. Who do you know? Anybody that's doing it, that's succeeding in this, that doesn't feel like it's worth the sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I would add to that, Laura, that. um ask a professional to look at them and diagnose what's going on mm -hmm. like you do with the with posture and and overall balance and health a lot of people are never going to look i saw a guy the other day walking around and he was all hunched over and i was like i bet if he just knew and somebody told him what he could do to stand up straighter he'd look younger he'd feel younger. but he's he's probably doesn't care right i'm fine but right. if he suddenly realized the benefit and the blessing and he came to you and you were to say, here's what we can do. Here's what you can do so that your posture goes from this to this. I saw two guys walking at the mall recently and I know they were the same age, but one guy was slouched over and he looked 20 years older than his buddy that was standing up straight. So go to somebody that can tell you and diagnose you. 
I like to call it an assessment, yeah. they're better at being able to tell you, this is what's going on. This is what you need to do. And I love this. One of my favorite things to do with people wanting to lose weight is when they, they call and say, hey, can, can you meet with me and just tell me what you see? I love that. Love that, that. that shows such a lot of vulnerability, but it also shows they're ready to be honest. They're ready to hear a little bit of honesty and they're ready to be honest with themselves about what their current situation is and that they need help. And those are the people that we can really serve. Those are the people that are going to see the best results. The ones that are, <laughs> yeah. That, that, yeah, that helps. They want some help. They don't just want to hear it again. They really want the help in taking the steps and going through the coaching process. I love it. Yeah. Um, Joe, so then finally, <laughs> where do tacos fit in? <laughs> where do tacos belong in a good weight loss program? Well, have you seen the meme with Jack Black where he's Nacho Libre and you've seen that movie and he's leaning up against the tree and he's got his stretchy pants on and uh, he says, I want a hot body, but I also want tacos. <laughs> and so the reality is we want both. This isn't a gimme. This, is, this doesn't come without some somewhat of a battle. It's not. It's not just one thing. We don't just want tacos. We also want to be fit and feel good and be healthy. We don't just want to be fit and feel good and be healthy. We like things. We like treats. We like tacos. Yeah. So realizing that, yes, this does not come without being intentional, having a plan, because as I, as I said a minute ago, I, I don't think there's anything wrong to eat, bad to eat. I'm fine with anything you eat. But it's it's you've got this thing inside of you that you can determine you're going to train it or let it run a run them up mm -hmm. and it's this our appetite mm -hmm. and if you decide i'm just going to let it go its way and see how it works out how's that usually end how does that always end right it doesn't end well when we just i'll just see what happens no you you better have a plan because when you have no plan that's your plan I'm doing the no plan plan where I just see what happens. See what happens, yeah. When we are not intentional, it doesn't go well. When you decide, hey, this is worth being intentional and having a plan, then what we find, what's really cool is it ain't that hard. Mm -hmm. But we had to come to that place where we, okay, I'll do a plan. Mm -hmm. I love and it's it. going to have some reasonable boundaries in my life. And, and, and then everybody, you know what everybody's going to think then when they see you? Oh my goodness, how'd you do this? It's a miracle. You look wonderful. It's what'd you do? What'd you take? Right. And you just came to realize, I, I just realized I need to plan for my life. Otherwise I'm overweight, obese, unhealthy on meds and all this stuff's going on. And I just decided that I can do it and I've got a plan now. Well, and I think, I think tacos can, can be a metaphor for anything, any, any of those temptations. It can be yeah. a, a metaphor. Little Debbie, little yeah. Debbie tacos. Yes. Chocolate covered Metaphor. popcorn, it's all good. I mean, and, and that happens. Life happens, celebrations and birthdays and bad days where you want to eat your feelings. That happens. So what is our best plan for that? What would you say is, what, what's the best plan with how to, to train your appetite or train your, your willpower there? <laughs> well, <laughs> shameless, shameless plug here. <laughs> Good segue. If, if you don't go through a process that teaches you and trains your brain to look at things differently, you know, you can experiment around and see, but I, I walk people through a process that helps them to see it differently, helps them to see their blind spots so that they can begin winning, yeah. right? Lose the weight and keep it off. And so I think you need somebody to help you see what you're not seeing. How many people have you heard say, well, I know what to do, but blah, blah. Well, what does that tell you? Knowing what to do is not worth anything. Exactly. You've got That's to have somebody so help you implement what you've yeah. got to do. If you don't have a motivation and inspiration, somebody, an accountability, it, it, yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows Mountain Dew bad, broccoli good. Right. Everybody knows. <laughs> that didn't help you knowing that. That's a t another tool. You knowing is just a tool that means nothing 
until you have some level of desperation, yeah. right? And, and a plan and a process. I think that's so important that you that you mentioned that because people give up on themselves if they if they screw up or they know what they're supposed to do but they can't follow through. But the reality is they need to go through a process. And, 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 and to understand that it is it, there are going to be some ugly days where you're, where you're falling off the wagon and it's a struggle and you haven't got your plan or your mindset or your strategy in place, but it is a process and that is okay. And, and that's what, yeah. coaches, that's where coaches come in and that's where your 21 day transformation comes in. Yeah. People resent needing help. Oh, we feel right. like this ought to be natural. It ought to be so easy. It's like right. falling off a log. Right. Why do I have to ask for help, get help, continue to have accountability in my life? Why do I have to do that? Yeah. And that's why I say, once you do that, everybody's going to think it's a miracle because most people aren't willing to do that. Just mm -hmm. look around. They're not willing. They're like, certainly one day I'm going to figure this out. and It's just going to fall in my lap. Yeah. Yeah. And that doesn't yeah. There's no truth there and there's no honesty there. Um, Joe, it's funny that you mentioned the, um, I know what to do. I just can't seem to do it. Cause that is one of the questions that, um, our age strong groupers wrote in and wanted you to answer. I know what to do. I just need to embrace it. Please help. <laughs> so how would you, how would you answer that? How would you solve that for this person? I would say it, you know, uh, accountability breeds responsibility. You need to ask somebody to help you be accountable. Yeah, I love it. Ask for help. It's totally okay, everybody. Everybody that's watching, yeah. we appreciate you being here and, and we appreciate you watching the replay. But I think that's one of the keys, Joe, to really seeing success with anything that's difficult, whether it's saving money or learning how to take care of your car or losing weight or taking charge of your, of your health and the aging process, ask for help. Okay, second question from our age strong group, Joe, was I'm planning to spend a lot of time at the lake this summer with my family. What are some family friendly, healthy snacks? <laughs> yeah. How are you know, to that? We're, we're going on a camping trip ourselves this weekend, and um, we will eat a little differently than we normally do, but there is a built in mindset. I would say in every person going, kids, grandkids, everybody has this mindset of an appropriateness that sounds like stick in the mud stuff. But here's, here's the best way I could put it. Splurging is fine. Just don't splurge like an overweight person. Mm -hmm. How, you wanna, do you, do you want to go camping and eat like somebody that weighs 300 pounds? Is that what you're saying you want to do? Right. Right. When, when, when I go to Cracker Barrel, I, I was there not long ago and a guy came up to me. He said, Joe, Trendle Joe's at Cracker Barrel. What do you eat here? I said, well, I know who I'm eating for. I'm not eating for a 300 pound man. I'm not eating for a hundred pound girl. I'm eating for 165 pound, relatively fit. Trainer Joe, that's who I'm eating for. So I'm not going to eat for two people. Yeah. So there's this mindset that I can go and splurge. But if, but if we're feasting every day, that's really called indulgence and entitlement. And you're going to be have a problem. But if you have times where you decide, hey, we're going to go on this and I'm going to eat Twizzlers and Oreos while I'm there. Who cares? Mm -hmm. I don't care. But if you do it in such a way to where it blows a month worth of you working hard, well, you didn't do it right. right. <laughs> you shouldn't have eaten eight bags of Oreos. Right. So there, there comes, that. we get this understanding Oftentimes from somebody looking us in the eye and saying, you did what? And then they realize, oh, that was dumb, wasn't it? It's like, yeah, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that to have fun. You didn't have to drink 18 beers and drink and have 72 popsicles over the weekend. <laughs> but it was fine to have something you like. So it's, it's realizing there's a reasonable balance. What a lot of people think is that for me to be healthy and do well, I'm going to have to act crazy. Uh -huh. and, and what I like to tell them is, oh, no, no. You've been doing crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why you're where you're at. So true. And when you finally see, oh, I can have a reasonable, uh, love my life even more than I do now when I am eating with reasonable boundaries. It's like a train on the train tracks. Well, don't you wish it could just ride off the tracks? No, it doesn't do well. And that's how we are. And we're like, well, can I go and just eat two pizzas all by myself? Is that what you want? What do you want? 
Exactly. Cause there's nothing wrong with reasonable feasting and celebrations. Right. But tell yourself the truth about what you're doing. Are yeah. you, are you overindulging or are you treating yourself here and there once in a while, totally different conversation there about the truth of what you're doing. Yes. Do you have, you, sometimes you just got to come to terms with, I have a really terrible relationship with food mm -hmm. and it ain't fixed yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking I'm going to go and do anything and do it reasonably. Doesn't make a lot of sense until we've, we've had training year after year after year on how to be 50 pounds overweight. Mm -hmm. And we think we're suddenly just going to do it right. right. So there takes an in, being intentional and saying, I've got to go through something, learn how to do this and think right. Because yep. you haven't been, it's the same way if somebody's anorexic and they're going on a trip, well, how do you think they're going to do? Right. Bad, why? They think bad. They think wrong. The way they process about food and relate to it is not good. Totally, well, yeah. What do you think about somebody that's 50 pounds overweight or obese? You think they've been doing it good? No, they haven't been doing it good either. They suddenly going to figure it out, know how to do it, do it right? Probably not. Right. In, in your program, I love that. I love that about it, Joe. That it that it walks people through that process so that they can start understanding the truth about where their blind spots are, like you said, and how to correct those so that it's a behavioral, it's an attitude, it's a mindset about their relationship with food, not just. I mean, everybody knows, like you said, broccoli good, Mountain Dew bad. We don't need more information. We need a process and. Right. To people that are are ready and they are they are ready to ask for help and go through the process how do they get in touch with you they can go to my website which is trainerjoes.com or they can email me at joe at trainerjoes.com i'm not trader joes right i don't have grocery <laughs> we do trainer have joes too <laughs> trainer joes j-o-e-s.com or joe at trainerjoes.com for email Love to hear from anybody that has questions or would like to know yeah, more. Guys, keep the conversation going. If you're watching or, or uh, watching the replay on Facebook, keep the conversation going with, with your questions. Uh, we'll make sure we yeah. pop Joe's contact information in the comments there. And then I'll make sure that everybody watching um, on the replay via email gets all this contact information as well. Joe, anything else going on with you that you wanna plug or shout out? Any last words of wisdom? We've loved hearing all your nuggets tonight. Well, you know, thank you so much for doing this. You're yeah. a great hostess. Uh, <laughs> I think this is going to be a, a, a help for some folks in the way that you've set it up. Easy to share, easy to uh, give to people. Um, yeah, cool. We've got our next group doesn't start until July the 6th, I believe. And so we've got some time between now and then. So this is a good time for me to do assessments. If somebody would like to sit down, if they're local, we can sit down at Panera and, and I can evaluate, tell them what I think. And that's always a fun thing. People usually really enjoy that because I'm able to see things they're not seeing. Yeah. So that's something they could consider doing. Otherwise, they just look at our next group and, and get ready for that. I love it. Well, we appreciate your time tonight. I know you're a busy guy. It's fun talking with you, Joe. And um, if you guys loved what you saw tonight and think that you know somebody that needs this information, we'd love it if you shared the video with them too. All right. Good night. Thank you again. Good night. Thank you so much, Laura. Talk to you later. Talk to you later.